Baseball on CSN Chicago is presented by State Farm. And we're playing two today after the Cubs had their eight game winning streak come to an end in a 7 4 loss earlier. They'll try to start another winning streak tonight in the rubber match against the Padres. Great to have you with us along with Jim Deshays. I'm Len Casper. The Cubs won last night. It was the Padres today, 7 to 4, and the Cubs will turn to veteran right hander John Lackey. Yeah, John Lackey coming off a very good start. He's been awfully good for most of his start so far this year. Here are the numbers from his start against the Nationals. Seven innings allowed, just six hits, a couple of runs, uh, punched out 11. He's done that twice this year. That's one shy of his career best. Left-hander Drew Pomerantz, uh, a high draft pick, J.D. He's bounced around, but maybe has found a home here in San Diego. Well, he certainly has pitched very well for the Padres through six starts this year. The Cubs have faced him twice in his career. It's been a while. Those two starts came back in 2012. So, in spite of the loss, the Cubs are still 25-7 and in their first 32. They took the opener of this series last night. The Padres came back, got a big home run from Brett Wallace, and won earlier today. Game three of the series, game two of the doubleheader. Next. Chicago is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Ford inviting you to check out their fuel efficient lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Transparency. Low fares. Nothing to hide. On low clouds. Foggy and hazy throughout the afternoon and into the evening hours. Been pretty cool. Temps in the uh, low to mid 50s. Cubs will look for a doubleheader split and a series win before an off day tomorrow. Umpiring uh, crew tonight. Joe West, the crew chief, will get home plate. He was off for game one. Kerwin Danley. Is at first Andy Fletcher at second and Stu Sherwater is over at third. Cubs are 25 and 7. 12 and 4 at home. Padres now within three and a half of the Dodgers in the West. 14 and 20 on the year. So the Cubs take the field behind right hander John Lackey and now the Padres Southwest starting lineup they put up 14 runs in the first two games of this set. John Jay gets his second start of the series leading off in his center Myers and Kemp have started every game of the set Melvin Upton Junior back in there and left Alexei Ramirez left early last night with the hamstring issue but he's starting tonight Christian Bethancourt with his first action of the series Jose Perellas at second Adam Rosales at third and right handed hitting Drew Pomerantz the left handed pitcher that's nice. Cubs defensively 
Jorge Soler is going to start both games with a doubleheader. Fowler uh, out for most of the first game was a late game replacement. Jason Hayward's over there in right field. Bryant's Baez, La Stella, Rizzo, third to first. David Ross behind the plate. And the Alexis pursuing perfection starting pitcher is uh, the big Texan John Lackey. He's made six starts. He's 4 and 1 with a 4.02. Earned run average. He's made three here at Wrigley this year. He's 2 0 here with a 2.49 earned run average. This is his second start on the homestand. We showed you the numbers from his last outing against the Nationals. Uh, Kyle Hendricks was good after giving up a couple of runs in the first inning. Seemed to get better as the day went along. Got a, a tough no decision. John Lackey gets set to work. He actually uh, kind of steps off where his landing spot should be and draws a line. Yeah, and I hadn't noticed this before. It's, I did you know, in his last start. Measure his uh, his stride length. Wants to make sure he's where he needs to be. Either that or uh, he's calling a little offsides on the Padres. We are underway. Lackey usually very efficient attacks the strike zone early. Uh, this Padre club not really patient. They like to go up there hacking. So we could see some early uh, early judgments here, either quick outs or early traffic for the pods. A few uh, pitching ratio notes for uh, John Lackey. Strikeout rate right now. Career best 25.2 percent. He's uh, just above major league average in his career. Called strike three right on cue. He fans John Jay. That little drop down two seam fastball that works its way back to the inside corner. And Lackey, the former Cardinal, gets his former teammate John Jay. Walk rate just over 6%. It's always been a little bit better than league average in that regard. He's giving up line drives at a career high rate, 34%. And going into tonight, 93 on the fastball to Will Myers. Yeah, and I think that the high line drive rate is probably a function of his aggressiveness. He's willing, like I said, to attack, as you see there on our pitch tracks, the, the big part of the strike zone early. Um, Risk reward play for him. Uh, he gets hit or swinging, they get swing mode, they'll get some early outs. He may get them to expand later in the game because of his aggressiveness early. Uh, but there is a chance when you're that aggressive, you're going to give up some hard contact. One and two on Myers. Two for five, reached on an error, scored twice earlier today. Fly ball to left off the end of the bat, and it's Solaire to grab it. Two down. There's Matt Kemp. Crowd gathering. And a foul out of play on the right field line. Cubs today dropped their first game in about a week and a half. Uh, lead they had uh, or a game in which they had a, a lead and it, it felt comfortable. You know, Kyle Hendricks was dealing. Tough day for Pedro Stroke just could not make that big pitch when he needed to. 
Shoot some balls hard, but as uh, Joe said after the game, he called it the biggest little yard in North America. Got us today. Chris Bryant, a couple of balls really well. The one that got out was off the bat of Brett Wallace. Committed three errors as well. Wallace on the bench to start this one. So Ross pointing in front of home plate and wants him to bounce this one. Two and two. It's not a bad strategy against Kemp. He uh, has shown a willingness to expand his zone. He hardly ever walks. A frequent swinger of the stick. He goes up there hacking. He'll chase breaking balls down and away, and he'll chase high heaters. Short center, and it's the second baseman, La Stella. Padres go in order. Cubs coming up when we come back. The leadoff end is presented by Benny's Beverage Depot. If Dexter Fowler gets a hit here in the first, Benny's Beverage Depot will donate $100 to the Greater Chicagoland Food Depository. Cubs Southwest starting lineup. Fowler played in game one, did not start it. Hayward was in center. He'll start in right. Bryant played the corner spots in the outfield. He's at third. Rizzo, that's cleanup as per usual. Soler has started both ends. Same for Baez. He's in for Russell here in game two. La Stella spells Zobrist. Ross and Lackey, the battery, rounded out. And lefty Drew Pomerantz is ready to go. Looking from the stretch, kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, kind of Arietta esque. He's our Lexus uh, starting pitcher for the Padres here tonight, and he's been really good. Three and three with a 2.12 ERA, 34 innings. Yielded just 21 hits, a 176 batting average against. That's a funky motion. I mean, he, he looks like he, he comes to the set position like he would out of the stretch, and then he's got a very subtle windup. It's both. There's the stretch and then the step. Just a tiny little rock back. One and two. On Fowler, who went one for one went into the game late earlier today. And fouled upstairs. Well, Morant's uh, first round pick by the Indians in 2010. Number five overall out of the uh, Ole Miss. He loves his curveball. And you see why. Three.
Well, let's check in and see who's where for the Padres now. Uh, junior in left, John Jay, Matt Kemp, center and right, Rosales, Ramirez, Perella, and Myers. Third to first, Pethencourt is behind the plate for Pomerantz. Yeah, in that draft, it was Bryce Harper, Jamison Tyone, Manny Machado, Christian Colon, and then Pomerantz. We went two picks ahead of Matt Harvey and eight slots ahead of Chris Sale. 2010 amateur draft. Here's the 0-1 to Hayward, and he hits a little soft liner over a leaping Alexei Ramirez. Well, with this shift, it, it sure feels like these last two days Hayward's been thinking the other way. Well, and I think against the lefty, he'd be more inclined to go the other way because you've really got to fight to stay in against the left-handed pitcher if you're a left-handed hitter. Keep that front shoulder closed, be willing to shoot it the other way. Didn't really crushed that one, but just muscled it out there into shallow left. It was very optimistic leap by Ramirez. Joel West. Walking over toward the dugout because uh, Bank of Lights has gone out. We'd like to welcome all our viewers watching on Independence Telecommunications Utility in Independence, Iowa. I seem to recall a light issue a few years ago here, and Joel West noticed it. He's always been one of the better light. Umpires in the league. <laughs> I'm going to slip that by Cowboy Joe. He throws that curveball over 40 percent of the time. No starting pitcher in the National League throws a curveball anywhere near as much as this guy does. Ability to throw for strikes, obviously key for him. He gets a lot of ground balls with that pitch. Off the plate outside. He went to Ole Miss. He's from Collierville, Tennessee, which is a suburb of Memphis. Little slugger, All American, is a high school junior. Hit hard on the ground through the hole on the left side. Two on, one out for Rizzo. And stays back nicely on the curveball. And on top of it, but hit it hard. Yeah, uh, I'm to dad, Mike. Played at Ole Miss as well. Was a 13th round pick of the Twins in 88. His uncle also played at the Ole Miss and was an 18th round pick in 83 by the White Sox. Older brother is Stu Pomerantz, right-hander, made three appearances with the Orioles in 2012. So he comes from a baseball family. And as Rizzo takes a strike, but his great-grandfather is a guy named Garland Buckeye, pitched in the majors. In the 1920s, one game for Washington in 1918, and then with Cleveland and the Giants in the mid 20s. His great grandfather went to Joliet Township High School. That's one of the all time great names, Garland Buckeye. Garland Buckeye. Never got a chance to see his great grandson pitch or even meet him. He passed away in 19. 75. Foul back. Big swing by Rizzo. So drafted in, in 2010, didn't start pitching professionally until the next summer, 2011. And then during that year, traded to the Colorado Rockies, which is just, you know, that's a fate worse than death for most pitchers. And things did not go well for him with the Rockies. Moved on to Oakland and in Oakland traded over here this winter to the Padres. Play ball four six three. 
to end the inning. After one, no score. Light in game report a lot made of the sophomore slump coming into this season with guys like Chris Bryant, Javier Baez, Addison Russell, and so far most appear to uh, be avoiding that, if you will. And Joe Madden said a lot of that is because he believes they went through that a year ago, guys, and the adjustments some of them went through even mid-season with their swings and the league adjust to them, they adjusted back, and now he thinks that of course they'll still go through some rough patches, but. He believes that last season prepared them for those this year and uh, went on to say you know what why don't we just call them juniors. They skipped a grade. <laughs> <laughs> They're advanced. Thank you Kelly. Second inning. Melvin Upton Junior. Fouled out of play down the right field line. Pitch outside. A reminder Cubs baseball on CSN Chicago is presented by State Farm. Missed again, two and one. Upton had two hits, including a home run last night. Pinch hit walk in the eighth earlier this afternoon. Slicing drive foul, two and two. Well, these guys have squared off a fair bit over the years. 33 at bats for Upton Jr. against John Lackey. He's a 212 hitter, seven out of 33. Two of those, three and two. Two of those seven hits home runs. One of the few guys in their lineup that'll take a walk. This has popped up. Ross racing over and no play. of other afternoon action around baseball Buster Posey with a bases loaded walk in the 13th inning a walk off walk 5 4 Giants beat the Blue Jays today both teams 18 and 18 swing and a miss strike three 
Strikeout number two for John. Again, drops down the arm angle a little bit, gets a little extra run on that two seam fastball. You see the anguish on the face of Upton Jr. as he comes up empty. In his last start, like he got his 2,000th career strikeout. One of three active pitchers with at least 2,500 innings. Bartolo Colon, CC Sabathia, the other two. Ramirez bounces back to the mound. Two outs. Up fans, tickets are going fast. Don't wait. Plan now. Get tickets to the matchups. You want to see it before they're gone. The Pirates in for a big three game set this weekend. It all starts Friday. Get your tickets now. Cubs.com. Christian Bethencourt giving Derek Norris a rest. And he pops it up. I don't think Rizzo will have a play, and he will not. Eighth start of the year, first season in the Padres organization. Former Atlanta Brave. That's a power hit, a long home run a few days ago in uh, San Diego. From Panama. One and two. All time leading home run hitter from Panama. Carlos Lee. Lee Carlos Ocobio. I think he's from Panama. Ben Ogilvy. Carlos Lee, 358. Ben Ogilvy, second, 235. We were all over it. Strong on our Panama knowledge. Hall of Famer Rod Carew from Panama. Up the end of the bat as he pops. To La Stella. Six up, six down for Lackey. Sharp early. Pizza. We're feeding our great TV crew between games. 
John Wallace with a nice pile of food. It's good, Doug. Pepperoni, maybe a little meat lovers. Some salad. Nicely done. Oh, good. Bottom of the second, Cubs with back-to-back -back singles. There's Pomerantz in the first, but he got out of it. And Anthony Rizzo double play ball. I wonder if Aurelio's has a senior smoke special. <laughs> Aurelio Lopez. Wow, the best leg kick <laughs> in baseball. Off the outside corner to Soler. One for four in the doubleheader opener with a double. And that was his first extra base hit since April 21st in Cincinnati. Big swing and miss. And it's one and one. So I mentioned uh, Drew Pomerantz, his older brother, uh, Stu, just a, a quick cup of coffee in 2012 with Baltimore. Drew hit his first major league homer in San Diego. 2012 with the Rockies the same day Stu made his major league debut. Pretty neat. It's a big day. Big day for the family. Drew and Stu. Mentioned uh, Collierville, Tennessee. Zach Cozart is from there. So are the Throneberries. Fay and Marv. Marvelous Marv. It's high, it's two and two. Yeah, Pomerantz, you know, he, he uh, for the number five overall pick in the draft, he's never been a guy that really lights up the radar gun. I think, you know, a polished college pitcher they saw, a fast tracker to the big leagues is why he was picked so high in the draft. There's the curve. Curveball that was taught to him by his dad, and apparently it was taught to his dad by his dad's coach when he was a kid. Talking to Mark Sweeney about it in the neighboring booth there. Mark's doing the Padre baseball. He says it is kind of like a knuckle curve. He, you know, he pushes it out with that index finger, kind of like a Bert Hooten. Be able to get a tight enough shot where we can actually see how he throws that pitch. Baez next, and then Lestella. Good take. Three and two. Who taught you your curveball? Um, um, self taught, I think mostly just messing around playing catch. So Jim Deshays taught you your curveball. Not a very good one either. Did you teach anybody else a pitch? Um, it's got to be somebody. I don't know. Along the way. I never taught anybody a pitch. Teach you how to wear a hat though. <laughs> Inside, that was pitch number 10 of the at bat. And Solaire's day is coming. He's got to hang in there, stay patient. Rung up here on a borderline pitch. His batting average and balls in play is, is really low, and there's a, certainly a function of luck there. Taking his walks. He's going to be okay. There's Baez who had the Mother's Day Marathon game ending homer. A bit of a defensive slump. Three errors his last two games. He was playing short for Russell in this one. Well, they are really shifting to the left against Baez. Almost playing the I formation there with yeah. uh, Rosales and Ramirez.
uh, there's a logical explanation for it. But if you're going to play the shortstop where he is, why would Rosales not be a little bit more toward the line? This yeah, I think they have maybe it. a step towards the line. Because if if he gets one down, obviously by you down the line, it's going to be two bases. Uh, but they're clearly in his head. He's thinking about trying to push a bun out there to the right side. And that's part of it too. You know, so you're shifting, you're taking away part of the field, and you're also making that hitter think a little bit, maybe changing his game. I think, especially with the lefty curveball pitcher on the mound, the way they are deployed makes perfect sense. Bias hits the ball on the ground a lot to that side, especially if he gets on top of that curveball. Three two is low. We'll bring up Tommy Lestella. Look at those numbers for a part time player. Part of the group that's been so good in a part time role. And of course, and then so the argument then becomes well, if he's doing so well, why doesn't he play more often? And Joe Madden would counter with well, one of the reasons why he is doing so well is because I'm putting him in positions to have success. Yep. Runner goes. Tap to the pitcher. Pomerantz will get the out at first. So Baez is second. Two down. And it'll bring up David Ross. A nice break. Probably had the base stolen. Inch proof tonight and because it's the final game of the series. Pomerantz has given up two hits. The Padres the only franchise without a no hitter. They didn't have a cycle in their history prior to Matt Kemp doing it last year. This is a team that had has been around since 1969. No cycles, no no hitters until Kemp checked one off the list. Uh, Clay Kirby was it that Preston Gomez pulled from a game while pitching for the Padres with a no hitter. I don't know if that's the closest anyone has come in Padre history. I think he got through eight. One and one on Ross. Andres will host the All Star game as we mentioned earlier in the series. I believe the American League is going to bat last. In the middle of a run of National League ballparks hosting the All Star game. We will not be at Petco Park until August after that game has been played, which will determine home field advantage in the World Series. Has not been drawing easy assignments. His last three starts, he's faced Madison Bumgarner, Clayton Kershaw, and Noah Syndergaard. And I believe his second start of the year was against the Phillies, and I think that was the Velasquez kid that's striking everybody out. And he 
strikes out Ross and uh, throws made but he's already called out because he was headed back toward the dugout JD's very good at that don't give him a hula hoop or he'll do it oh man we put out a clinic. Two join CSN Chicago for taping of Beer Money, the trivia show that tests your sports knowledge in exchange for cash. Uh, Kelly will host tomorrow night at five at the Ogden in Chicago. Beer Money presented by Coors Light. Padres a 7-4 winner earlier this afternoon. Scoreless. In the final game of this series. Perella, Rosales, and Pomerantz for the visitors. Found a base runner through two. Here's the pitch. It's a strike. Hey, there's a man. Marquette Knight. Yep. I saw another Marquette logo and the jacket of a, a fan. Do they play baseball at Marquette? Uh, I think on the club level, not. It's not a varsity sport. Baez to Rizzo. Experience the Budweiser bleachers under the left field video board and one of the newest amenities, the left field porch. This private porch setting offers tremendous views of the game with both sunny and shaded areas. Available in 50 to 100 blocks, you'll enjoy lounge style seating, unlimited beverages, and access two hours prior to first pitch. For more info, Visit Cubs.com slash Premier. Salas swings and misses. He does that a lot. Snapped an 0 for 20 skid. A 2 for 5. Game 1 today is now played second, short, and third in this series. Two. 
Every pitch with a purpose. Jack Neff's mayor with an inside fastball. Now he's got him aware of both sides of the plate. Gonna hook him. John originally originally drafted by the Angels second round of the 1999 draft out of Grayson County College in Denison Texas. Is in. Eight up, eight down. Talking about that uh, porch in left field. We were out there uh, broadcasting last year. It's a great spot. There's Pomerantz. Baseball uh, fans consume the sport on many levels in terms of their intensity. Some people are locked in watching every pitch, keeping a scorecard. For others, it's just a night out. Tension kind of drifts in and out. Pomerantz, nine out of 45 as a major league hitter. That's 200 average. Bob Euchre's lifetime batting average for a pitcher, you'd say that that's good. Yeah, that is good. Well above average. Swing and a miss. Lackey, perfect through three. Nothing, nothing. Coverage of baseball brought to you by T Mobile. Bryce Harper, a fine and a one game suspension for confronting an umpire following his ejection Monday, but he will appeal and in the lineup tonight. So I guess the best he can hope for is no suspension or just the one game. You can't really suspend him for half a game, right? Yeah, I know. Maybe you can negotiate like a. Uh, Why not though? Let me, let me let me pay a higher fine, and not serve a suspension. Why couldn't you negotiate four and a half innings? 
practice. Anything's possible. He's been ejected seven times already in his career. He is one for two with a walk tonight. As the Nationals lead the Tigers two to one in the bottom of the sixth. That's the Jordan Zimmerman Max Scherzer matchup. Scherzer has 13 strikeouts, no walks through six. Mm. On just 77 pitches, 62 strikes, 15 out of the zone. That's it. That's a, that's a woody pace he's on. Through six. With pretty low and pitch count. Nine more outs to get. We're keeping an eye on. I don't think he was real happy after uh, his performance here last weekend. One and two on Lackey. Strike three called four for the lefty. Clark's crew presented by Jewel Osco and Tropicana this is the official kids club of the Chicago Cubs team up with Clark as a member of Clark's crew and receive kids specific perks experiences and merchandise visit cubs.com slash kids to sign up your young Cubs so they can be part of the fun. All season long. I think it's really cool. The Cubs mascot's name is Clark. You know the street right out here. Yeah, it's called Clark. Uh huh. That's that worked pretty well. Huh? I wonder if that's how he yeah. got the job. I'm knocking on the door, said, "Look, I'm a Cub. My name is Clark. I got <laughs> what more do you, what you want? want? <laughs> one and one on Fowler." He struck out looking in the first. The Cubs are six and one against left handed starters. Nineteen and six. Versus righties. Fowler. Strikes out five for Pomerantz. He's faced ten hitters. Uh, he, he does a real nice job combining the the sharp downward breaking curveball with the elevated fastball. Both swing and miss pitches. Was that pitch right there take you back to your salad days? Yeah, that the high fastball. Yeah, yeah. That was you, uh -huh. right? Uh huh. That's that's you know, talk about staying out of the happy zone. You got to get up. Up above the hands, you know, about chest high. Where was the top of the called strike zone when you pitched versus today? Was it higher? Was it the same? No, I, I think you would probably get a few more. You know, depending on the umpire, you might get more high strikes now than you did back then. There were some guys umpiring back in the day that were really wide. The strike zone was? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> that too. Normally if you if you threw it mask high to the catcher, you were not going to get that pitch called. That's still mostly the case, but you see it a little bit more now. Career, if you're a top five pick, you're going to be given lots of opportunities. Once you've changed organizations a few times, just you got to perform. Pomerantz is doing that for the Padres early this season. He just struck out the side.
Bowles and his contributions to the game of basketball helped elect him to the Hall of Fame. Tomorrow, get to know Bulls owner Jerry Reinsdorf on an all-new Inside Look presented by Cadillac, premiering tomorrow at 7 on CSN Chicago. Fourth inning. Runs for either team. Two hits, both belonging to the Cubs. John Jay takes a strike. The Cardinal teammates, Lackey and Jay. Nine up, nine down to get started. Green ball the other way. And it is so there. Well, these pitchers are going along. This game starting to take on the feel of one in which the play could be really significant. Even Matz, Matz left-hander, will have his Saturday start skipped in Colorado. He's got a sore forearm. Well, if you're going to come up with a sore uh, forearm, that's the one and the time to do it when you're in Colorado. That foul. Twins lost again, nine to two, to the Orioles. Dropped to eight and twenty-five. Two homers for Mark Trumbo. Have a good year. The Orioles team, man, they hit a lot of home runs. Orioles hit consecutive homers for the third straight game. And Jones four hits. Twins have dropped seven in a row. Driven to right. Hayward is there. Perhaps you're in charge of planning your next social gathering. How about planning a day or night here at Wrigley Field. Enjoy special perks only available inside the ballpark. Cubs offer special ticket packages for groups of 15 or more. Cubs.com slash groups for information. Rangers were down. Three times came back, beat the White Sox. 6 5 the final in Arlington. John Lackey threw four, has not allowed a base runner in a scoreless tie.
and Chicago.com presented by State Farm. John Lackey's been terrific. And the Cubs will try to get on the board here. Is a strike. Chris Bryant. Single in the first. 15 strikeouts for Max Scherzer. As Bryant lines out to Jay. 15 strikeouts through seven. I believe that's right where Kerry went. He got the three in the eighth, two more in the ninth. Uh, so the pitch count. 93 through seven. Jordan Zimmerman and his return to Washington's been good. He's allowed two runs in six innings. Ball one on Rizzo. Anthony's on base streak at a career best 23 games. Mm, good swing there. Good healthy cut at the fastball. Uh, pitchers dominating here so far in this ball game, and there'd be, be a temptation to say, well, it's a day night doubleheader. Guys are tired, they're out of their routine. And there may be some of that, but I think it's mostly about real good pitching by both these starters. That is a strike. And it's one and two. 52 degrees as we got started. Very slight breeze straight in from center. Just missed. Pomerantz wanted it. Two and two. Solaire on deck. Here's the pitch. Ground ball. Backhanded play. Ramirez gets rid of it quickly. In that uh, White Sox Rangers game, Adrian Beltre made an error. Ended his streak of 44 games without an error. Second longest of his career. Four time gold lover. And uh, Todd Frazier had to leave early. Suffered a bad cut on his lower lip. And he had to get stitches with face first into the seats chasing a foul ball. But other than that, okay. Indications, early reports are he's going to be good. Yes. Yeah. Can anybody say, down goes Frazier? He said he felt his tongue go through his bottom lip. Oh. That does not sound fun. Mm. That's not good at all. My daughter Kelly called a Solaire home under. I just want to go on the record in case he goes deep. I'm okay. Give her credit for making the call. All right. Well, 3 1 count. Oh. And down. He tried. 3 and 2. See, this is what, what you know, he's throwing that, that, that curveball down. Under the swing and then the fastball up above the hand. See how hard he has to work to try to get on top of that pitch. Wow. 
off. Ball oh, strike three. Second time he has been called out on strikes. As we head to the fifth, the fans join the Cubs season ticket holder waiting list. Do it today. Claim your spot in our lineup for season tickets. It's easy and free to register. For details, visit cubs.com slash waiting list. John Lackey back to work. Upton, Ramirez, and Bethancourt. Marwin Gonzalez two run homer bottom of the 16th to beat the Indians Houston five Cleveland three Marwin a former Cub farmhand mm -hmm. sure got him in the rule five draft a few years back so they've been uh, a little better lately the Astros after a really bad start. Hit very hard. Baez has got some time. And he throws him out. So let's see with that win today. Six out of nine for the Astros. We'll see them in September. Know if they have the parade route for your uh, return to Houston all uh, <laughs> set up just yet, but I know there'll be a lot of people happy to see you. A lot of good folks down there. Astros seven and a half games behind Seattle at the start of the day. It is still early enough for them to get back in the playoff race. It just that 
that month of April cuts their margin for error. And every team has that lose seven out of eight, and they can't really do that again. <laughs> right. This point. Yeah. Got to be pretty steady the rest of the way to get back in the postseason picture. And the folks down there will cling to the uh, either the 04 or the 05 team. Started 15 and 30. Coming up in the postseason, the 05 team, of course, beat by the White Sox in the World Series. Now, was that the year Phil Garner took mm, over? Yeah, Gar, well, Gar came in uh, mid 2004, I believe. Took over for Jimmy Williams. That was the year you're talking about. Yeah, there was a headline in the, uh, in the Houston Chronicle, a picture of a tombstone and the rest in peace or lay laying to rest the, the season. Was that not right out of the break and they hosted the All Star game? The, uh, Garner, yeah, Phil was hired. Yep, right. that's right. Yep. And Jimmy was on the staff and he got booed when he was announced. It was kind of ugly. Three and two to Ramirez. Foul, just foul. It's funny how my brain works because I do not have the kind of baseball memory that, that a Pat Hughes. Does for instance mm -hmm. was that also the year Carlos Beltran? That's correct. Was traded, mm -hmm. and there was a question about whether he could participate in the All Star game because he went from one league to the other, yeah, and he ended up correct. being like yeah. an injury replacement. Yeah. You are, uh, you are correct. Okay, sir. and then he went off in the postseason. There's Pat. When in doubt about these such matters, especially involving the Cubs, and Pat was there. He he, he knows. We always uh, defer to him. I'll tell you the date, the time it happened, and the temperature when it happened. <laughs> this is a good battle here. It will be at least a 10 pitch plate appearance for Ramirez. Lackey will win this 10 pitch battle. Two down. There's Bethan Court. Mentioned the uh, Marquette Club baseball team. They uh, tweeted at us. Thanks for the shout out. We may be a club team. We've got D1 jerseys. That's good luck. Looking solid right there. Uh -huh. yeah. and of course, after significant contributions from alums such as Len Casper, <laughs> they'll build that sparkling new stadium up there, and good baseball will be off and running. Casper Field. Here's Bethancourt. Ring out of Hoya. Deep drive to left. Way gone. One nothing Padres. As Bethancourt breaks up the perfect game. He had retired 14 on a row to start it. Wow. Perfect game, no, no shutout, all gone, just like that. I talked about his power. He hasn't, you know, hasn't shown up a whole lot. He hasn't had a, a ton of major league playing experience, but he hit a massive home run in San Diego the other day, and he got out, out in front of that breaking pitch and absolutely pulverized it. Of 
Crawford took a couple strides to enjoy that one. That did not sit well with Big John. Is our Ford home run replay and a big swing and a miss by Perella. Four forty five estimated distance on that home run. That might be the longest one in this ballpark this season. Over. He late getting over, but Rizzo on the dive. A little late. So Perella is safe. Let's it's see. Just a little bit of a, a mental mistake by Lackey. He doesn't break, and, and he, he is not an option. It becomes Rizzo's play, and it looked like Kerwin Danley got it right. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully that doesn't blossom. Now Anthony stays upright, runs through the bag. He might beat him, but there might have been one heck of a collision. Yep. Great effort by Rizzo. Rosales. No, no, no. Hunter goes and a tapper that Lackey will handle. And that will end the inning. John Lackey shaking his head. He had retired 14 in a row to start the game. And he wanted Bethancourt to run. 1 0 San Diego. And a uh, special birthday wish goes out to Brett Kaplan, David's son, 22 years old. In the Cubs jacket. In a great spot right next to the Cubs dugout. Curveball to Baez is in from Pomerantz for a strike. One nothing San Diego. Here's a pitch swing and a miss and a change up part of the narrative for uh, uh, surrounding Baez this year has been an improved approach at the plate and I'm looking at some numbers he actually uh, 
He's going outside of the zone as much as he has in the past. He's just expanded on the, the, the breaking ball and then the high fastball. The one thing he's doing differently this year, though, he's more aggressive in the strike zone. He's, he's attacking a little bit earlier. I think last year there were times where you know, he was kind of almost like that Starling Castro storyline where forcing himself to be patient and then getting behind in the count, and then he would chase a ball like that. For the eighth strikeout for the lefty, you can follow Patrick Mooney, our Cubs insider, at CSNChicago.com, presented by Nationwide's Jeff Vukovic, serving the community for 38 years. Go to JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. Here's Listello. Amarant's had 10 strikeouts earlier this year against the Pirates. That's a, a career high, so he's. Likely to sail by that here tonight. Max Scherzer has 18 strikeouts through eight on 106 pitches. It's three to one, Washington. Hmm. We will keep you posted. Two and one. Uh, Kerry Wood got 20. And of course, Roger Clemens did it twice. Randy Johnson got 20 in nine innings. That game ultimately went extra innings. Kinsler, Martinez, McCann, and Ghost have all struck out three times. Victor Martinez is two for three. And is the only Tiger starter who hasn't struck out. Line shot out in the left center. Ostella hustling around first. He's going to have to hold with a long single. Well, he just continues to impress that curveball that has been uh, so bewitching tonight for the Cub hitters. Ostella just stays back, stays on it, and pings it the other way. So nine in a row had been retired by Pomerantz prior to that hit. And Six were on strikeouts. Ball one to David Ross. Should we expect a conversation between John Lackey and Mr. Bethencourt? Or is that over? Um, I would think it's over. I think the game is too important. Oh, a conversation when he comes up to hit. I think he meant like. Uh, oh yeah. I think you're using conversation as a metaphor for a fastball in the ribs. No, no, no. Because remember yes, the, the yes, Kelly Johnson yes, situation. He talked to Tyler Flowers. I would fully expect Lackey to say something like, hey, "Dude, you haven't been in the game that long to be watching your home runs. Let's go ahead and run." Or maybe he'll just let it go. But I would not be surprised. Two and zero oh on Ross. Kick the pitch 3 and 0. Remember, the Cubs are still the only team in baseball that has not lost consecutive games. 3 0 green light, and Ross fouled it off. So they lost the opener today in trail. One to nothing here in the fifth. Three and two. Remind you a little bit of Rich Hill with that curveball. Comparable. A, yeah. That's a good call. Ball four. So well, here comes Lackey. Now he's 
Jones. Concentrating on Gary Jones's signs. Salas in on the grass at third. Well, these pitchers have done a nice job helping themselves in the batter's box. Matthew batting 176 with an 0 for 1 here tonight. League average. Major League average for a pitcher this year is 140. Oh, and two. On the ranch home. Fouls. Ranch has not allowed more than three earned runs in any of his first six starts. And strikes out. John Lackey, two down. The Budweiser patio offers fans an all inclusive Budweiser bleacher experience in prime home run territory right down the right field line. This outdoor semi private space opens two hours prior to the game, is perfect for corporate outings, client events, family gatherings. For more on all the available outdoor spaces located in the Budweiser bleachers, visit cubs.com slash premier. Pomerantz has nine strikeouts. That's one off his season and career high of 10. He had 10 against the Pirates on April 20th. Found by Fowler. Tying run is in scoring position. That's Tommy Lestella. Ross at first, two outs, and an 0 1. Jay will make the catch, and the inning is over. Cubs strand two and trail 1 0 after five.
Public transportation. The Cubs do offer a free bike check now located near the Addison Red Line station. For drivers, the Cubs provide free remote parking and shuttle service on night and weekend games. For information, visit the A to Z guide on Cubs.com. Padres lead one to nothing. And the Christian Bethencourt home run in the fifth. Reached Waveland. Oh one to Pomerantz, cut and a miss. Oh and two. Pirates come in for the weekend, and the Cubs will face Francisco Liriano for the first time this season. On a Friday, he got pushed back after Pirates and Reds were rained out last night. Pirates uh, trailing the Reds four to three tonight. They're in the eighth in Cincinnati. Ball strike three. I love I love the Joe West call third strike. Uh, my guys are very emphatic, and Joe just kind of casual. Too dramatic here from Joe. He's been at it a long time. Yes, he has. Thirty eight years and counting. Ranks third all time in games umpired over four thousand eight hundred. Trailing only Bill Clem and Bruce Fremming. You know he finished first in his class at the umpire development school in nineteen seventy four. I did not know that. He did. I know he played uh, he was quarterback in college at Elon University. Jay strikes out. And he's a recorded uh, country artist. He has a patent and trademark on the uh, chest protector used by more than 95% of Major League umpires. Designed all of Wilson's high end. Equipment started a company called West Vest LLC. Really good golfer, too. He's a Renaissance man, that Joe. Two strikes on Will Myers. A pitch outside. Love Lackey's tempo. He gets the ball. He's right back on the rubber, getting the sign, ready to go to work. Always on the attack. Make a pretty good instructional video with the uh, Cubs starting pitchers here today. The way Hendricks worked with his change up sinker combination, the way Lackey has gone about it here tonight.
Kemp would bat next here in the sixth if Myers gets on. Now full three and two. In the air to right. Hayward to grab. Two base runners for the Padres, but they lead one nothing. Com at bat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Outside corner and a strike on Hayward. Bottom six, one zip San Diego. Happy 14th birthday wishes. Jillian Sparks. Chad Sparks has a birthday uh, coming up this weekend. From Bloomington, Illinois, with Cup fans. So Max Scherzer gave up a home run to JD Martinez. To start the ninth, he then struck out Miguel Cabrera for his 19th punch out. Victor Martinez with a base hit. And a fly ball deep the other way, upped and back, and he's got it. Almost into the vines. Hayward gave it a ride. One out. And Jason still looking for his first home run in a Cub uniform. Good to see him backing up an outfielder, though. Got extended, got those big long arms out. Just not enough to get it out of here. Upton able to run it down. And as Melvin Jr. made that catch, his brother Justin is batting against Max Scherzer, who has 19 strikeouts through eight and a third tonight. That is foul off the bat. With Chris Bryant. Some anxious moments for Dusty Baker as he looks on from the dugout and the pitch count continues to rise for Scherzer. He's nearing 120. That 
that's low. What has Pomerantz done to handcuff the Cubs and tonight? That, that curveball obviously is a great weapon for him. He throws it over 40% of the time, and I'm guessing he's thrown it even more here tonight. That coupled with that up in the zone fastball is a real, it's a classic power pitcher combination. Elevated fastball, sharp down breaking curve, and, and the ability to command the curveball. He can start it a little bit higher, drop it into the, the strike zone early in the count just to get ahead, and then bury it. Down under the swing when he's looking for a swing and a miss or a weak contact. Three and one. Speaks to the confidence and everything there too. Not going to give in with the heater on 3 1. Feeling pretty good about his chances to make a pitch with his curveball. 3 and 2 on Bryant. Upton strikes out. It's 20 for Scherzer. The tying run is on base, by the way. Two outs in the ninth. It's 3 2 Washington. 3 2 count. Ball four. Bryant is on for the second time. So Max Scherzer joins a very exclusive group and he's got a chance at 21. Rizzo has hit the ball on the ground twice. 4-6-3 double play and then grounded to short in the fourth inning. Deck. I think Kerry Woods phone is blowing up right now and Roger Clemens Randy Johnson. It's over. Brian, uh, James McCann rounded into a fielder's choice to end the game. So Scherzer gets the win. 3 to the final, and he ties the nine inning record. 20 strikeouts for Max Scherzer. 119 pitches. No walks. Give up two solo home runs. What a performance. Ground ball to first. Knocked down by Myers. He'll have time to get Rizzo, but no double play chance. Tying runs at second. With two outs for Solaire. We talked earlier in the game about pitchers dominating and how every little play takes on added significance, and the inability to get two on that sharply hit ground ball could prove to be a big play. Hitter, you're just hoping he hangs one of those breaking balls. Strike called on Solaire. Solaire struck out twice, looking both times, and not happy with that call either. Last time it was an inside fastball that got him. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Got a battle, got to stay in the at bat. Can't be adversely uh, influenced by the umpire strike zone. You got to hang in there.
Can you confirm? Clemens 86, 96, Wood 98, Johnson 01, Scherzer this year. No walks in any of those performances. A tweet was just sent. Oh, out. is that right? I don't know. Wouldn't that be something? Two, two, swing and a miss. Tough night for Solaire. That ties Pomerantz's career high with ten. Continue their road trip. We're going to match with New England. Coverage starts at six on Comcast Sports Net. Cubs trailing this game one to nothing. Both starters still in. Bush continues to throw in the Padre bullpen, so Pomerantz may be done. And that would be very good news for the Cub hitters the way he has thrown the ball tonight. Swing and a miss. Yeah, that, that's pretty incredible that the 20 strikeout no walk line as Baez will get Kemp. Kerry Wood just tweeted out congratulations to Max Scherzer on an impressive and dominant performance tonight. Welcome to the club hashtag filthy. <laughs> Am I wrong to think that's incredible? And in the five twenty strikeout games, nobody walking. No, yet. that is that's walks. incredible. None. Fowler's got it. Two quick outs. It'll bring up Ramirez. We've seen 15 strikeouts in this game combined. Pomerantz has walked three. A nudged foul up along third by Ramirez. 37,828, the paid crowd for game two of this split doubleheader.
back. Remember Ramirez was it a 10 pitch at bat in the fifth and did in a ground out to second. Yeah and that's his profile he doesn't walk a lot but he doesn't strike out a whole bunch either. Out of the zone to make contact, but usually when you're going out of the zone, you're not making real solid contact. She clearly had Max Scherzer and the next pitcher to strike out 20 pool. Swing and a miss. Time for the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Mazda. For tonight's stretch, please direct your attention to the outfield video board. All right. Let me hear you. Go loud. I want a two. A three. Take me out to the ball game. Take. Strikeouts in a nine inning game. You can add Max Scherzer to that list. Uh, so his last star was here. He got knocked around, gave up what four home runs in that ball game. It's a crazy game. First man out of the shoot for the Padres tonight is Kevin Quackenbush. He's been busy working for the 19th time. He's got a good hook too. One strike to Baez. This was a real deal tonight. Six innings, three hits, no runs, three walks, tied his career high with 10 strikeouts. An ERA of 180 on the year. Following this outing, in the air, long run over, Kemp. 
Oh, and I hope he's all right. That ball is foul. Oh, my goodness yeah, gracious. Boy, it's tumbling and tumbling into the wall. Nice. Oof. Happy to see him get up in one piece because he kind of lost control as he fell towards the wall. He's, he's trying to pick up the wall. Oh. He's got the bullpen mound there. A lot to think about for Kemp. That uh, that bullpen phone, the back of the mound, the wall itself. Worry about a neck injury, a back injury. That is treacherous. What an effort. And Baez will get another chance. Well, he's all scraped up. You can see he's already bleeding there on the bottom of his forearm. And just to clarify, Randy Johnson's 20 strikeouts came in nine innings, but it wasn't a nine inning game. So when, when, they, when they set the record for strikeouts in a nine inning game, Randy's not included. The game uh, ended up going 11 innings. It's kind of bogus, all right? You punch out 20 in nine innings, <laughs> it's just as good as any other 20 strikeout, nine inning performance. Three and two on Baez. Here's the pitch, and he got him. We saw some of this with Quackenbush the other night too. Not an extreme hard thrower. Looks like four seam fastballs, 90 to 91, but he gets swing throughs and pop ups. I'm guessing the hitters will tell you he's one of those guys that throws that invisible up there. Center cut. Maybe a little bit of a late start for Baez. Foul tip by Lestella. Deception comes uh, in different forms for a pitcher. Sometimes they just hide the ball real well. You see it with Arietta the way he rocks his shoulders. I think Quackenbush, it's, it's a real quick arm stroke, and I think that, that, that's what Travis Wood does too. Quick arm action, and the ball gets on the hitter more quickly than they anticipate. Flexed by that strike call. But you see where it ended up on our uh, Toyota pitch tracks. It was a quality pitch. So Brad Osmus has witnessed a couple of those, right? 20 strikeout games yeah. on the other side. Houston and managing Detroit. When did De Roger pitch have his 20 strikeout game against the Tigers? Was that the, when Osmus was playing, or was that probably before? Uh, 86 and 96 were his two. Two balls, two strikes. High fly ball, shallow left. Upton, two hands on it. Just going to mention Ben Zobrist is available off the bench, and he's now on deck with Ross at the plate. Awesome has spent part of the 96 season with the Tigers, so he might have been there for that one too. I don't know about you, but my left forearm is throbbing right now, thinking about Matt Kemp. <laughs> He's probably going to feel that tumble 
for the next two or three months. You say your arm is throbbing and anticipating a potential starting assignment at Coors Field. <laughs> trying, to, trying to duck a start. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that arm is, is hurting, but he probably feels awfully fortunate. Came out of it as well as he did. So, yes, yeah, so Brad Osmus has witnessed three 20 strikeout performances on the other side. Incredible. Two one Ross pops up in the center. It's John Jay to end the inning. Quackenbush goes one two three getting late into the eighth one nothing Padres. Now time for our Cubs upcoming game schedule brought to you by Travel Wisconsin. Plan your fun today at TravelWisconsin.com. Pitching matchups for the weekend. Lefty, lefty, righty for the Pirates. Righty, righty, lefty for the Cubs. It'll be a deja vu all over again for the Pirate hitters. Hamill, Arietta, and Lester all worked in the series in Pittsburgh. It'll be Cubs first look at Lariano and Locke this year. They did face Cole. Hit him around pretty good in his start. Well, here's Bethan Court, the guy who has provided the one run. Bethan Court with a long home run in the fifth. Be pitch 100 for Lackey. Our Xfinity high speed action. Breaking ball, see where Ross was set up. They're trying to go uh, down and away with it and stayed on the inner half. Hand. Lefty. 
Andre bullpen. A base hit. Off single for the Padres catcher. There's Perella. Lackey due to lead off the bottom half of the eighth, so this will be it for him if he can get through the, the top here. Those last two or three pitches to Bethancourt were up and caught a lot of the plate. Hey, the Braves won a home game. They're second in 18 tries, five to one over the Phillies. Bunt it toward third and a good one by Perella. Out at first, good stretch by Rizzo as Bryant gets Perella. Beautiful bunt. The Padres are reviewing the video. Out. As long as his foot was still on the bag. Give Perella a sacrifice. Runner at second. And the batter, Rosales. Marlins edged the Brewers three to two in Miami. Red's bullpen gave it up again. Pirates scored uh, one in the seventh, one in the eighth, one in the ninth. Take a 5 4 lead into the bottom of the ninth. Mackie to Rizzo, runner holding. Here's Brett Wallace, who had the game winning homer in the opener of this doubleheader. You got a backdoor slider for Pedro Strope hitting into the bleachers in left center. The book on Wallace used to be that he had a hard time getting the, the hard stuff in, that he get locked up in that front side a little bit, couldn't turn on the ball. Perhaps he's made some adjustments. Big strong kid. I want to go in. And Pedro not sharp at all this afternoon. And it's six to four. The final was seven to four. One and one. As you mentioned uh, last night, it's the kind of power the Astros were looking for a few years ago from Wallace. And they thought he might be the first baseman of the future. He can empty the tank here. One, two pitch. I'll try it one more time. John throws a high percentage of fastballs, but it gives you different looks with that heater. You know, four seamer, two seamer, he'll drop down. Give the hitter a different look. 
Hendricks real good against Wallace this afternoon with the sinkers and changeups. So a season high in pitches here tonight. And Wallace went. Joe West said so. That'll take us to the bottom of the eighth. Still one nothing San Diego. Next broadcast of Cubs Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet comes to you Sunday afternoon. Andrew McCutcheon and the Pirates are in town. The coverage begins at 12:30 with Cubs pregame live, presented by Fields Auto, right here on CSN Chicago. Brad Hand, who was claimed off waivers from the Miami Marlins on April 8th, reported to the pods the next day. Yeah, um, 473 ERA. So he's walked a fair number. He's allowed a couple of home runs. And Zobers coming off the bench. Right handed against the southpaw, and he takes inside for a ball. By the way, it's law enforcement uh, night here at the ballpark. As the Cubs are honoring those who serve the city. Two and zero. Oh. This is a guy you'd want in this spot. Down a run. And that leadoff man on base. Fog really rolling in. Wind is kicked up. Got a uh, really cool cap. Law enforcement. Yes. Red, white, and blue cap. It's two and two on Zobris. Brilliant stuff from John Lackey tonight. Eight innings, three hits, one run, no walks, seven strikeouts. Three superb starts in a row for Lackey. Remember that real early got all kinds of run support, wasn't quite as sharp. Tonight, the opposite. All strike three. Obris normally doesn't argue, but he knows the strike zone, and he said, uh, "Joe, come on." 
Yeah and we've seen this from Joe tonight a lot of these left handed breaking balls finishing off the inside corner. He sees them as strikes. Dexter Fowler. Strike one. Down to five outs now to keep this streak of not being defeated in back to back games going. Crazy Crab's going to make an appearance tonight. Yeah, very much like the candlestick. <laughs> oh. This feels like this July in. in San Francisco. Run the Cubs are on of not losing back to back games the longest since the Philadelphia Athletics 1929. This also kind of has a Roger Corman film feel starring Vincent Price. Swing and a miss strike three. Thirteen strikeouts for Padres pitching. Yeah, all, all the red all the red going on my scorecard reminiscent here. Vincent Price movie. <laughs> so it's up to Hayward to keep the eighth alive. Up and in. Back in the day, yes. Before cable, the whole deal. The late Friday or Saturday night, when I was a kid. Peter Lorre movies. Christopher Lee, right? And Vincent Price. Mm -hmm. So Hayward does keep the inning alive, and here's Bryant. Nobody can hit him. This pea soup tonight, it would be him. Well, interesting that Andy Green didn't have a right hander, doesn't have a right hander up for this confrontation with Bryant. Crowd getting into it. One on, two down. That missed badly. That was a, I don't really want to challenge this guy with my fastball kind of fastball. Hefty 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 home run leaderboard. Rizzo with 10 Bryant and Zobrist. Combined for 10. Not sure who's available in the bullpen for the Padres tonight. That's a strike. Pop 
picked him up. Dropped by Ramirez. Hayward in the vicinity. Might have been distracted. Everybody saved. Oh, oh my. Maybe the loudest of ovation you're ever going to hear for an infield pop-up as this one pops out of the uh, glove of Alexei Ramirez. And who thought he was out of the inning has to reset and go after Rizzo. Bosley to the mound. First and third. Tying run now 90 feet away with two outs. Maybe he lost it in the fog. in the inning walking an arrow with two outs ball one Court with a double take. Well, where do you go if you're if your hand facing Rizzo here on two and zero? He's right on top of the plate. Got the outside part of the plate easily covered. Three and zero. Got the green light here. They're loaded. Base is loaded. It's all in hands, hands. Nobody up in the Padre pen. What a great chance for Solaire. It has been a miserable night for him so far. Three trips, three punch outs. And all change with one swing of the bat. Three on, two down, the pitch. Five bad ones in a row. Say he's a little unnerved right now. So Lair has to be anxious having this tough night. Who can control the emotions? Who can control the moment the best here? You know, today is National Twilight Zone Day. Forgot to go shopping. may feel like they're in an episode of that show right now. Mm. The pitch. Hard sinker. Well placed. Hayward, Bryant, Rizzo. Third to first. Pitch there just pulled off it.
Eighth inning drama. A one two. Has it been a pitcher's night? Yes. These two teams have combined to go six for 52. But an error on an easy pop up has opened the door here in the eighth. 2 2, he got it. To end the inning. As the Cubs leave the bases loaded to the ninth, one nothing Padres. Striking out number 20 on the night for Max Scherzer. All kinds of notes out of that one. Wilson Ramos has caught three no hitters and now a 20 strikeout game. We're in the five to punch out 20. Scherzer, uh, two no hitters last season for the Nationals. Here's Travis Wood. Some other defensive changes as John Jay lines to one of those changes and Bryant had to reach up at the last possible second to get it. Good to be tall. Zobras stays in at second with Stella over third. Right to left. Joe's going to make a change. Just down a run here. Likes his chances to do a little damage in the bottom of the inning. Day off tomorrow. Gonna bring Rondon out of the bullpen. We'll be back in the night.
auto service experts pitching change. Here's Hector Rondon. Yeah, and uh, take note down there near the bottom zero walks 20 strikeouts for Rondon in 12 and a third innings. He has been absolutely brilliant. Seven out of seven and save tries. In those seven save opportunities he's only allowed two hits struck out 12 and of course didn't walk anybody. Myers cuts and missed it. Own one. Mm, good try. Certainly could have been. Struck him out. Joe has really uh, had that tame call because he's he knew he was going to use it a lot tonight. <laughs> Burn himself out early. Kemp with two outs. Stella Ross scheduled hitters in the bottom of the ninth. Ernst Fernando Rodney, it appears. So picks it up, Rondon over to the bag quickly. And here we go. Bottom of the ninth. Cubs trail one to nothing. They try to avoid their second straight loss for the first time. Keep this split doubleheader and get this series two out of three 
Travis Jankowski is now in right. Fernando Rodney got the save earlier today, and he's trying to do the same here tonight. Nine for nine and save opportunities for the veteran. Spent a little time with the Cubs last year. Two pitches, fastball, changeup. Quite as uh, firm as he used to be, but can still brush it up there pretty good. The changeup is devastating. Baez to start it. Here's the pitch. Ball one. That homer in the gloaming you were talking about mm -hmm. earlier today. Up the middle. And a base hit. Tying run is on. A little bingo before the homer in the gloaming would work. The Stella now. That's a good approach against. Rodney, because of the changeup, you gotta stay back. Stay through the middle. The baseman Rosales way in. Pitch is up and away. Ball at 93. Roman McGloman hit by Gabby Hartnett for the Cubs in 1938. Walk-off home run. <laughs> 2 0. Ryan Kalish is on deck for Ross. Tough guy to fool because he's so quick. He waits back so well. The first foul. Foul ball. Well, Myers has booted a few tonight, and on a couple, he's gotten outs. One deflected to second. But that one was foul. Yeah, he's definitely a work in progress down there at times. He's look, looked a little awkward with his footwork. Good call down there by Kerwin Danley. Ground ball to third. Diving stop. Rosales, they get one. That's it. As Perella got the out at second. And Kalish will bat. With Lestella now at first and one out. Seven plate appearances has reached four of those. That was going into today. He did uh, make it out against Rodney in game one. And ground out to first. Could not be a good idea here because it might end the game. Rodney 
would love a ground ball at one of his infielders. He five that time. Obris waits on deck. Opportunities 245 in his career, 39 years old. He's got a marvel a 39 year old guy throwing 95. Yeah. An impressive staying power. It sure is. Runner goes, ground ball to second. They stay out of the double play. That's the good news. The tying run is in scoring position. The guy who's piled up a ton of hits here these last 10 days. That's more good news. Can't use this, cuts her down to their final shot. They'll take their chances here. Zobrist against Rodney. And is 0 for 11. Against Rodney, his former Tampa Bay teammate. The pitch right in there for a strike. The only run in this game off the bat of the catcher, Bethancourt, a home run in the fifth inning. His bullpen has been outstanding today. Four scoreless in uh, the afternoon game. Two and two thirds so far here in the nightcap, and only one hit. Two and one. If he works around Zobris, Fowler would get a shot. Chris doesn't chase. Rodney doesn't want to give in. Knocked down by Bethancourt, three and one. And reached back for a little extra there. Got to 97, but couldn't command it. What the best hitters do. The guys with a great approach force you to try to come up a little something extra. Three and two. Zobrist, you're in protect mode. If you're Rodney, you throw him a changeup. Well, that's the problem. It's hard to sit on anything with Rodney. Yep. And he will step off. Mm -hmm. 
Here it comes. It was a fastball. And then you got to protect against the changeup now. So well behind that 97 mile an hour heater. Stella the runner at second. Two outs, bottom nine. Rodney knocks it down. He'll underhand the Myers and the Padres. Sweep the Cubs here in this doubleheader. One nothing the final here in game two. That's a tough loss for John Lackey as Drew Pomerantz beats him. And as you mentioned, their bullpen was terrific. Yeah, so for the first time this year, the Cubs lose back to back games. They come on the same day. Not what we anticipated when we came to the ballpark here this morning, but uh, tip of the hat to the Padres. That bullpen, outstanding work. Seven scoreless innings on the day. Toast to the game presented by Binney's Beverage Depot. Drew Pomerantz with that curveball and the high cheese it was very good tonight. Yeah, both starters. He punched out 10 and six innings. John Lackey outstanding for eight. One swing of the bat, the difference in this ball game. Binney's Beverage Depot is the official champagne provider of the Chicago Cubs. We're back on CSN 1230 for our pregame coverage on Sunday series and homestand finale Cubs and the Pittsburgh Pirates for JD and our entire crew great work by everybody it was a long day for them Len Casper with your final score seven four pods in game one one nothing Padres in game two Blue Cross Blue Shield Cubs post game live is next.